2014 Festival of Life, Rainbow Community School's annual winter program. This time of year is special to many cultures around the world. It is a time of gathering. It is a time of gratitude. It is a time of giving and of merrymaking. It is a time to celebrate the return of light to the world. Like old Saint Nick on his trusty sleigh, our wonderful music teacher, Sue Ford, has traveled the world to bring us songs and celebrations that honor the sacred gift that unites us all, the gift of light. Oh, and it's also time to silence your cell phones. Please, sit back, relax, and enjoy our journey around the world. Ladino. Ladino is a language that blends Hebrew, Medieval Spanish, and Arabic with Slavic, Greek, French, and Turkish words. Please welcome the preschoolers as they sing the Hanukkah song, Ocho Candelikas.
from France comes the story of St. Mark. One night, young Martin encountered a very poor man shivering in the cold. Martin took his cape from his own shoulders, tore it in half, and covered the man to warm him. Martin devoted his life to caring for the poor and became known for his ability to bring warmth and light to those in need. Lantern walks are a traditional celebration of martyrs. Our cloaks remind us to share with those in need. We carry lanterns as a symbol of light that we can shine out into the darkness. And now, the kindergarten Mary Poses. Functional, but 
visionary and progressive board. Any amount of success, any big vision takes amount some risk. We teach each of you that. We teach the kids that all the time. We have to take risks in order to be successful. And you can imagine those meetings of the board talking about the risk involved in purchasing this property. And the biggest short-term risk that they knew was at hand was whether we would be able to finish it. We have 5,500 square feet below our feet that sits as an empty shell, completely useless. We have no certificate of occupancy on it. It hasn't been brought up to code. It doesn't have handicap access. We're not even supposed to be down there. We use the bathrooms once in a while. Um, and yet we are so, so short on classroom space that if we don't have new classrooms opened up by next August, we have to rent a facility somewhere nearby or put up some temporary shelter. So that was the risk that the board took. They decided it was worth it. We had to, we had to gain this property. Um, but would we be able to finish it, raise the money in order to do the construction to get those classrooms open? And I think we're going to prove that we're capable of doing that. Yeah. And we are. Responsibility. 
In the past three years, we have managed rocketing and rolling growth, redesigned the math curriculum, added the special needs program, and received national recognition for our innovative curriculum. We have integrated service learning, won awards for environmental sustainability, and created magical playgrounds. No wonder Rainbow Community School was voted best school in Western North Carolina this year. Rainbow Community School is special to me because it, um, it holds a very high academic standard while continuing to look at um, the entire person, the entire child, to look at the social, spiritual, and community aspects of Rainbow. We believe really that educating the whole child through the domains is, is so important. And, I feel like if I saw that as an outsider, even if I didn't have children who were going to come here, I would see the good that this school is doing in the community and I really want to contribute to that. The value of investing in this school is the value of investing in our community and our world, and it's that our most valuable asset we have as humans is our children and our ability to grow a, um, a wholesome and um, inclusive culture. We are asking you to invest in this dynamic project. Once completed, it will vastly, vastly enhance the programming which will provide the students here at Langle and the impact on the larger community of Asheville. It truly does take a village, and everyone does what they can. No more and no less. We will raise the money necessary to complete this project and expand the magic at Langle Community School. Usually organize the party. 
The first grade cheetah will show you a Christmas play party mixer combining traditional Appalachian songs, Jubilee, and Jingle Out the Window.
Sammy. Well, let me move this for you. Sammy, I'll adjust it. All right. How Raven got the light. This is based on a story by the Haida people, Native Americans from the Pacific Northwest. Long ago, there was no sun, no moon, and no stars. It was very dark, and the animals had a tough time crawling, walking, and flying through the darkness. An old grandfather, who was once a powerful chief, had the sun, moon, and stars in a box. He liked them so much, but he did not want to share. He kept them hidden in the box of light. And there was a tricky raven. One day, raven saw the grandfather looking into his box of light. Raven told all the animals he had a plan to get the light. The animals were so excited. <laughs> Grandfather had a granddaughter. She went to the river every day to get water in her bucket. One day, Raven followed granddaughter to the river. Raven turned himself into a hemlock needle and dropped into the water. Granddaughter scooped him into the bucket. Granddaughter took the bucket of water with the hemlock needle into the house. That is when Raven turned himself back into his raven self. When Raven saw the box of light, he grabbed it and flew out. Grandfather chased him and almost caught him. But Raven gave the box to Honor, who gave it to, to Fox, who gave it to Hawk, who gave it to Bobcat? Who gave it to Chipmunks? Who gave it to Black Bear? Who gave it to Wolf? Who gave it to Blossom? Who gave it back to Raven? Raven finally opened the box of light. The sun and the moon and the stars went up into the sky. Everyone was so happy to have the light of sun in the day and the moon and stars at night. We imagine that your grandfather agrees. The sun and moon and stars are for everyone to enjoy. Of course there was a celebration.
for our um, holiday festival and like celebration. The last time so many of us were gathered together was for the Harvest Hoedown. And I'm here on behalf of the parent council to share with you what a success the Hoedown was. Um, and some of you may not know this, but every year, <coughs> for the past couple of years, 25% of what we make at the Hoedown, we donate to um, Children's First Community and Schools, um, a partnership that we are proud and honored to have had for the past couple of years. Um, so 25% is what fifth grade? One four. One four. Yeah, so one fourth of what we made will be donated to Children's First. Before we present the check, I'd like Stephanie Cody, if you are here, to stand up. Australia, 
The longest day of the year is in June, and the shortest is, the, is December. Why? The answer all depends on the Earth's tilt. Every year, Earth orbits around the sun on a tilt. So at different times of the year, either the northern or the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. So if you live in the northern hemisphere, Earth is tilted toward the sun in the summer and away from the sun in the winter. The solstice marks the turning point, when the days begin to grow longer, when they begin to grow shorter. On the solstice itself, the sun appears to stand still in the sky for a few days. The word solstice is Latin for sun standing still. For thousands of years, people from many different cultures have celebrated solstice. Our distant ancestors depended on the seasons and weather for hunting, gathering, and food. In our northern hemisphere, the passing of the winter solstice meant the return of the sun. Many religious and cultural traditions celebrated the rebirth of sunlight after this dark period. Festivities lasted for a week. 
with normal life on hold in favor of feasting, celebrating, decorating with evergreens, gift giving, and game playing. The festival encompasses the need to celebrate the bounty of the harvest and the good things in life while making peace with the dark and threatening the forces of winter. The festival of Saturnalia includes the selection of princess, a mob king who presides over the festivities in each household. Everyone must obey his rules no matter how absurd the pranks may be. The ancient sources also associate with the mythical golden age when food was available without all the hard work. During the Saturnalia, according to Lucian, men may remember what life was like in my days. When all things grew without sowing or plowing theirs of theirs, no ears of corn, but loaves of complete and meat ready cooked. When wine flowed in rivers, and there were fountains of milk and honey. All men were good, and all men were gold. Such is the purpose of my brief reign. Therefore, the merry noise on every side, the song and the games. Therefore, the slave and the free is one. Today, we are all equal. Hooray! Oye, omnes equales, sunes. Yo!
magic that this season sometimes brings in elves. Sometimes it is surrounding us, just like it is right here tonight. This magic is in the sweet smiles of all of these students. It's in the, the lights of their eyes. It's in their hearts. And it's in you. And I know the reason you're here tonight is because of this magic. The magic that fills this room that you made possible with your donations last year. Thank you. The magic lives in our campus. It lives in our classrooms. And it lives in music, obviously, that's <laughs> in our speakers. It is also in the 5,000 square feet that is right below us. And we are going to be expanding that magic to our lower level. The magic lives in these amazing teachers that are here tonight. for their 100% donation altogether. They feel so compelled to give to this campaign because they believe in it. And I know that you believe in this school too. So I thank you. I thank you for being here. And to do so tonight, we have um, a great uh, announcement that next Thursday is a huge party to celebrate all of you, to celebrate your contributions to our donations to our campus and for you to be here tonight. So next Thursday, Sarah Stender is gonna tell us more about it. Good evening, everyone. It's so great to see this space filled. I wanna thank all of you who have already contributed to our campaign. It's been an honor leading the combined campaign this fall. So 70% of you have already donated. all the volunteers who worked with me on the fundraising committee. So we have a number of parents and staff who participated. Could you all stand up? We still have a ways to go to reach our goal. So we're at, uh, this is the combined total, including last year, we're at $510,000 out of the $600,000 goal. We're really hoping to make it 100% before we all leave for the holidays, and I think it's possible. Um, so if you're feeling inspired to donate uh, for the first or second time tonight, we've got a few different ways to do that. We have packages at the end of the pews. You can put a pledge card in that. Uh, we also have a donation room in the back if you'd like to uh, go there before you leave, and you can also go online. I also want to thank our business sponsors. We have a number of family business sponsors, and I really appreciate the support that was given towards the That's a new idea this, this year, and um, I'm really happy with how that's gone. So um, thanks to our sponsors. There's a number of you in our audience. Campaign party and holiday send off, four to six in the Omega classroom. We're gonna have a food truck in the parking lot. Uh, we'll have adult beverages, we'll have activities for kids, we'll have childcare. Uh, so stop by between four and six next Thursday before you leave for the holidays. Thanks, enjoy the show. And we're gonna stay in the magic even further with the fifth grade. Come on up.
Its origins are in the first harvest celebrations of Africa, in which it takes its name. The name Kwanzaa is derived from the phrase Matura ya Kwanzaa, which means first fruits in Swahili. The symbols of Kwanzaa include the map, the canara, the cups, the corn, the seven candles, the unity cup, and the gifts.
Tai Yi and his 16 dragons. If Tai Yi was, was unhappy with the people, he would use these dragons to destroy the land. So the first emperor of China decided to have a brilliant party once a year to make, those, to make the celestial god happy and keep those dragons away. That's not the lesson I heard. What I heard is that the, is that the Jade Emperor was displeased of the village because they had hunted a sacred crane. He decided to destroy the village with a storm of fire. But a wise man from a neighboring village had a brilliant idea. He told everyone to hang red lanterns, set up bonfires, and explode firecrackers all night long. This would fool the Jade Emperor into thinking the town was already on fire. And guess what? It worked. The people were safe. I guess the Jade Emperor wasn't that clever. Well, I heard the Chinese Language Festival is the celebration of the return of light and defeat of evil spirits. Well, no matter what the different legends say, the celebrations are all the same. Ghosts of streets, singing and dancing, games and riddles, and lots and lots of beautiful lanterns. Thank you. 
Christmas of the Renaissance Age was a fairly different holiday than the one we are used to today. There was no Rudolph, Eggnog, or giant political Santa. I mean, come on, what's Christmas without a giant political Santa? And yet there are some traditions that are still present today that can find their roots in the Renaissance of the past. During the Renaissance, Christmas was more commonly known as Twelfth Night. It lasted from December 25th to January 6th. This is where the song, which called the of Christmas, comes from. Sorry folks, but Omega will not be singing that rather enthusiastic carol tonight. One popular ritual, however, was set up large bonfires in village centers. Then on Christmas Eve, a Yule log was burned in the family hearth around which all families, members, and friends should gather and make merry. Gifts were given during Twelfth Night to commemorate the Magi's gifts to the baby Christ. However, the most extravagant gift giving will be from folks for royalty, as they are hoping to gain the noble favor. Some things never change, I suppose. It was St. Francis who started to bring about a few traditions we certainly recognize today. One of which was the Nativity scene, where the birth of Jesus, manager, shepherds, wise men, and all was created to remind the people of this special day. The other was Christmas caroling, so the next time a pack of carolers come to your door, la 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 la, make sure to thank old St. Francis. And now, let us return to the past, as you make it bring the Renaissance to the present.
uh, to say a few words because they wanted to include the voice of an average rainbow parent in the holiday program, Festival of Lights tonight. And as I look out here and look at everybody in this building, I realize there's no such thing as an average rainbow parent. And there's no such thing as an average rainbow kid, and there's no such thing as an average rainbow teacher. There's nothing average about Rainbow Community School. And that's why we're here, because we love our school. I was just talking to somebody right before the program started, and we had both moved here from California, and we were talking about how when we talk to our friends who live in Oregon or New York or California, where they come here and they visit and they see Rainbow, they're like, ah, I wish we had something like that in our city. It's really unique, and we had determined in our conversation before this, that this is the best school in the world. to let their light shine. They're free to express their true self day in and day out. And here at Rainbow School, it's growing right now. Like to be in this, this space tonight, in this building, is amazing. I was here a couple of weeks ago, and there was a 50-piece orchestra up on this stage performing not just for our kids, but for homeschool kids and kids from Zaley Mountain and kids from Odyssey had come over. And that's the way we're growing and able to let our light shine even brighter and radiate our light out into the community. That's what Rainbow School is doing right now. When, I, uh, when my daughter started here eight years ago, I couldn't have imagined that we would have a space like this. But through vision and hard work, and generosity of our community, we were able to, to purchase this building and double the size of our campus last year. And now we have this incredible building. And now we have all these incredible buildings. And, but, even in these buildings, they're just shells. The heart and soul of our school is our teachers. And they're here every day. 